be advised there are spoilers ahead related to the property being watched and or discussed. Hello! Welcome back! Thank you for tuning in. If it's your first time, I appreciate that you pressed play on this video and I hope you end up enjoying it. My name is Asha. This is Asha Media TV where I like to watch, react, and share my two cents. Just my two cents about a couple of properties related to sci-fi and fantasy. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my condensed reaction to episode 5 from the second season of Fringe. This one is titled Dream Logic. I haven't pressed play yet, but I'm going to because I really loved episode 4 and my mind right now is reeling with all kinds of its all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff since it's been about um yeah, 10 minutes or so since I stopped the episode. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what is going to happen now that we know that Olivia is the super soldier they've been looking for, that William Bell <laughs> uh, has been, uh, has ordained more or less to uh, protect the two Earths that are apparently going to collide at some point or what thereof that I've understood from episode four. In any case, here's my condensed reaction to this episode for you. Damn. We're closed. No, you're not. Not to Olivia. I think I owe you a thank you. I got my memories back from the accident, so... I figured I wouldn't be needing these. I'm sure he'll notice something else that she'll need. Who died? Oh. You and your partner Charlie were pretty close, huh? Very perceptive. I guess getting your memory back wasn't your only problem. You know, if you ask me what you need right now, Agent Dunham, is something to help you with everything you've been going through. LSD? Something to help you make sense of it all. I got another project for you. Uh, yes, like bowling, you're gonna think I'm full of it, but here's the thing, Olivia. Whether you admit it or not, your life is something of a nightmare. <laughs> At least he's honest. And I hope you don't have anything against the color red. Mm -hmm. Alright, I guess I'll say it later. Jeez, Greg. Carl's really pissed off at you. What, uh, what'd you do, man? You gotta get in there. Are we going? Uh, like this and set. Oh! <laughs> Greg seen people with weird faces. You know how much trouble you caused me. I am going to destroy. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so he's hallucinating monsters. Well, look at his eyes. That's pretty trippy. Interesting. So it's about dreams. So was that a dream? I guess I'll find out. We haven't been dead in here, please. Hang on. Walter. What are you doing? Making my bed. Uh. A fireplace to keep me warm. And if I get hungry in the middle of the night, the, the kitchen is only 13 steps away, which is a prime number and a sign of good fortune. You know that you have a bedroom, right? Upstairs. Oh. Oh. Knock, knock. Hey, she's friends with. Welcome. I thought it was a. Uh, thank you. One level. Oh. Oh, that's me. I love presents. The apple fritters? Hey. Oh. Did he talk about? Italian ciabatti bread. Very oh. impressive, Walter. <laughs> something else that sounds good. I brought something for you, too. Oh, you shouldn't have. Agent Dunham sent this over. A man kills his boss, he doesn't remember, and then he has this really crazy thing with his eyes. This says there's video surveillance. I saw it. Whatever was happening to that man, it wasn't normal. Pack a bag, Walter. We're going to Seattle. Okay. Have we been there as a location in the story? I don't remember. That's okay. Thank you. 
you have a card? In case we need a ride while we're in town. Thank you. I'm like, have I ever asked for Cabby's card? <laughs> I don't think I ever have. He's been asleep for 16 hours. Like he was drugged. The doctors only managed to wake him up a few minutes ago. Walter knows about drugs. Peter, I don't want to go in there. I'd rather stay out here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Bad memories, I guess, from the hospital. And there's nothing else that you remember from yesterday. Nothing unusual. Peter, I think I'm crazy. Try me. I see monsters. It was like the office was infiltrated by these creatures. And Carl, he was their leader. He had hordes. Like some demon. Ah! Demon! Almost like I'm dreaming. Or like it was... Side effects from the drugs or something? Greg! Can't go in the room, Mrs. Lee. What's happening to him? Greg! Mrs. Leader, oh, please. No, 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 Clear signs of dehydration. It seems that this man died of acute exhaustion. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Human like, beings can't die. Nothing we're aware of, no. It has been documented in rats. Rats implies experimentation. Would you excuse me, Doctor? Peter, I need to go home. I don't like it here. Walter. This city has a smell. Walter. But it's wet. Reminds me. Yeah. Want to go home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too traumatic. We'll find someone to take you home. Thank you. Seems pretty harmless. Looks can be deceiving. <laughs> Buddy, I've been with the Bureau for three years. Flying your father home shouldn't be a problem. Right. <laughs> He's gonna babysit Walter. Bit of a tippler, huh? No, at any given time, there's a good chance there's about a half dozen psychotropic drugs in the system, so drinking, it's not a good idea. <laughs> good luck! Do you have a business card? So that I, I can send you a copy of the results? Uh, of course. Uh... So she's just asking everybody for business cards that she meets? I can't believe he's gone. Mrs. Leader. To find the trigger you know, point. Any sleep issues? These books, guides to sleep disorders, understanding sleep. No. Oh. He used to sleepwalk. Sleepwalking. That's so fascinating to me. And he was cured. He had seen a few specialists. He hadn't had an episode in six months. Well, we'll need the names of those doctors. And did he, by any chance, keep a sleep journal? Huh? Yeah. Clues. Would you like to see it? Yes, please. Okay, so we'll find out more about his uh, thought process through that journal. VIS HOP. Yes, we got the body. What's that about? They detained our bags. Raw milk. No, I'm pretty sure Dr. Bishop wouldn't have packed a bottle of raw. Uh, no. Yes, I understand <laughs> it's against the law. I'm a federal agent. Oh, yes, because it's unpasteurized. Well, obviously there is. In fact, you can assist us in removing his scalp. <laughs> Once you get used to the smell, it's really quite something. Come on, <laughs> come along. Come along. <laughs> it smells like cookies. <laughs> hey, I didn't wake you, did I? They're both wearing gray. What? They're coincidentally wearing uh, college shirts? His wife is right. 
For the last couple of months, he's been averaging between eight and ten hours of sleep every night. Then how can he die of exhaustion? It gets weirder. He was also using it as a dream diary. Guess what his nightmares were about? Monsters? Demons? Yeah. Demons. At least once a week. Then, a couple months ago, all of a sudden, they stopped. When I was a kid, I used to get these terrible nightmares almost every night. So, I know a thing or two about dreaming. It is one of the rare occasions in my childhood that Walter was helpful. Mm -hmm. Every night before I went to sleep, I had to say a mantra in my head. Please don't dream tonight. Please don't dream tonight. Please don't dream tonight. That's the mantra? Does that work? <laughs> yeah. You can't stop yourself from dreaming, but it did make it so that I didn't remember. From the age of 8 to almost 19, don't remember a single dream. That knowing Walter, I wonder if he. Hmm. Okay. There's been another incident. I was gonna say knowing Walter and this alternate Peter. I wonder if he's done something to Peter. We were on the phone with Chief. She said she saw a monster. Did, did you see her white hair? What happened to her? Okay. Gotta find a common denominator there. Do this kind of thing often? Dreams? No. Father Walter gets particularly excited whenever we do. Hmm. Looks real. There's a lot you can do with tofu and jelly. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> Some kind of little computer chip. Better than these midbrain. Salamis. <sighs> yes, that would make sense. Well done, son. Hold up, Walter. Agent Donna! Excuse me. Check the back of this, the other person's brain, too. Part of the brain that regulates sleep. Huh? What are you looking for? That. Okay, so if it's a chip implanted, somebody's controlling the chip, projecting the bad dreams. This particular chip has a transmitter which makes it wireless. So it can connect the brain to a remote computer? <laughs> Lots you can do with that. It monitors sleep cycles and when necessary, stimulates the thalamus which induces a deeper sleep state. There is a researcher in Seattle who has worked on several prototypes like it. The man's a genius. We've been tracking him for years. Laxmish. Dr. Laxmish Slayer? I'm Olivia Dunham. I'm with the FBI. What's this about? Both of them recently committed homicidal attacks and then died. As a result of what appears to be extreme exhaustion. Oh, God. Dr. Nayak, we found a biochip embedded in Mr. Reader's brain. Do you know what he Yes, did? yes, of course they both had the label part of a study. Oh, that's how he cured them? It's a large-scale clinical trial. There are 60 in the control group and 82 with the biochips. We're gonna need their names. Oh, that's a lot of people. I've been working on this chip for years. I've tested it extensively. And there's no malfunction that could have caused the kind of reaction we saw. What if the chip shorted out? Even if it had, the chip should have remained benign. So a malfunction chip causing them to go all cuckoo? So is there a way to kind of like... No, I guess not. I was going to say remotely shut down the chips. The main computer server. It contained all my research. The patient's files. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh-oh. Dr. Knight. The research assistant. Zach. Call the Research nurses, assistant, all the patients, huh? everyone they can remember. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll get right on it. He's a bit suspect. Dr. Knight, can you think of anyone who would want to steal your data? Or might want to sabotage you? I don't know. I, I suppose there are any number of companies. The chip was valuable. Well, the initial testing has been remarkable. It's cured sleepwalking, night terrors, all major non-REM sleep disorders. And my chip was helping them. It wouldn't make them hurt anyone, and it certainly wouldn't kill them. It just doesn't make any sense. Dr. Knight, do you have a business card? Just for our records. What is with this business card nonsense? Okay, honestly, okay. I'm 
It's probably related to uh, Sam in some way, right? Because he gave her something to do. So to ask for business cards. <laughs> Biochip plugs directly into the thalamus, which not only regulates sleep, but also works as a relay tower to the cerebral cortex, which also controls motor function. Mind control, Peter. Man. Could be the first time someone's attempted it. All <laughs> right. In this show. So it is possible. Theoretically, yes. If I fax you a schematic of the device's internal architecture, could you test the chip you have? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'd need to replicate the chip's function in a neutral environment. Of course, if I had a live subject. Walter? No. No student volunteer. Good news. The bags are back. He's going to use this guy? Say it. <laughs> no students. All right. No students. He didn't say no uh, agent, so. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I like that. So, uh, did you reach Walter? Yeah. He thinks it could be mind control, but modifying the biochips would take a lot of trial and error. So he thinks that someone's trying to perfect mind control one patient at a time. Well, that would explain why the events is seemingly without motive. Yeah. That's a good picture. Olivia, I think I understand what it is that you're going through, but that thing that you killed, that wasn't Charlie. I know. You know, my first week on the job, I was on a sting operation. I had been a military prosecutor, so I hadn't handled a gun since basic training. And so I did what any rookie would do, and I started looking for an exit. And then... Charlie walks over, this man that I didn't know, this gruff guy, and he said, you're going to be fine, and uh, I have to face it, that he is gone, and that he's not coming back, so I'm just going to go to my ex clinic and, and see if I can help the nurse identify some other patients. Hopefully they'll show some flashbacks. That's another way uh, actors stay on the show through past memories and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was right about the remote controlling, I guess. So, what do your friends think of my new Damn right. The assistant? That's another person? Okay. Oh no. Why are they doing this? <laughs> I guess I could say that for every episode. Demons overseeing that. I don't know why that's nastier and scarier to me. Oh. Okay. Dr. Bishop, I'm heading to the airport back to Seattle. Would you say goodbye to Agent Farnsworth for me? Certainly. Oh, before you go, could you do me a favor? I smell this. It seems my old factory sense is a bit muddled. It must be the French roast coffee I had for breakfast. Shove it in his face. Uh. I hope he's okay. Oh gosh, Walter. You get the business cards? Uh, yeah. I got, uh, I got eight of them. Eight? You asked everyone you saw wearing red? Yeah. Wearing red? So what do I do now? Just lay them out in front of you like you're playing Go Fish. Now take a pen. Circle one letter in every name, both first and last. 
the agent guy she asked, or the doctor, is he wearing red? No way. No, jumble. Jumble? Jumble, anagram, word puzzle. Find oh. a phrase. <laughs> what phrase? I'm not good at that stuff. What, what am I looking for? Whatever it is you need to hear. You'll figure it out. Gotta go. <laughs> Guess it works all the time. Hence why he assigns it. I'm not, I remember the cabbie was wearing a red shirt. Oh gosh, now I'm gonna have to rewind and look at all those characters. Now that patient files are gone, the server at the data storage facility was wiped sometime within the last 24 hours. Can we trace the hacker's IP address? We don't think there was one. There's no sign of a DDoS attack, and given the level of online security in the facility, we think whoever wiped the files must have had a password. So it was someone in the clinic? It would seem that way. Research assistant, that's a good start. I'm telling you, none of them would have done this. Agent Dunham, another one. Her eyes were going crazy. Her hair turned white, then she collapsed. I don't understand. You made it out alive. She, she was so happy. This doesn't make sense. In reality, an experience like that could destroy someone's life. Like, Diane suffered from night terrors. She was just in my office last week. We're gonna have to make a public announcement. Maybe somebody's trying to frame this doctor. Somebody's got some kind of vendetta against him or something. My lab assistant. He skipped work today. He hasn't been answering his phone. Mm-hmm. Zach Miller? FBI! Oh, Zacky boy, where are you? <laughs> what if someone else saw that note? Talking to the feds or... Oh, so Zach is a goner? Olivia. I guess that's why I wasn't answering the phone. Maybe it's one of the patients that they haven't located yet, because they said there's like 50 of them missing, I think. Maybe he's uh mad at the doctor. I drugged him. You drugged him? Walter, don't tell me you put that chip in his head. No, but I wanted to. <laughs> then I realized that I could attach the chip to an EEG net and the signal would reach his brain. If Peter's theory is correct, this is mind control, then the chip should receive commands from me through the neural stimulator. It's then translated into impulses that Agent Cashin's brain can understand. Walter, I do not think this is a very good idea. Don't be such a cringe. I told you science should be fun. Come on. Gosh, but not deadly. <laughs> Anything? Nope. <sighs> Walter, what is it? <clears throat> Other green unicorn just raced across the lab or I accidentally took some LSD. Oh, what? <laughs> Astrid. Wow. To keep a straight face during that scene. Okay, I'm going to send a copy of this to our question documents unit. I'll analyze the handwriting, the paper, and the ink. In the meantime, the police have offered to put a protective detail outside your clinic. And Detective Green will watch your house. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've got to try and track down the rest of your patients. Yeah, before they go on another manhunt. We'll call you as soon as we know something. It's probably someone he knows. The doctor will like figure it out later or something, trying to fix the situation on his own, like probably right now. I 
the door then. I showed them your damn note. So you might as well stop. Okay, yeah. Someone he knows, usually is, these kind of episodes. The chips are simply wandering sleep. They're accessing all the sensory information that, that passes through the, the, the thalamus. <laughs> Every color, sound, and picture while we sleep. Well, sir, are you saying that Dr. Nyack's biochips are stealing dreams? That's right. Oh! Leader's sleep journal. He slept for hours, but he never had any dreams. Before they reached his consciousness, they were all siphoned off. Which means no dreams. Uh, the brain can never recharge, and that would lead to death by exhaustion. Exactly. Oh, okay. The chips have the ability to turn on a dreaming state while the patient is awake, which would lead to paranoia, hallucinations, and a complete inability to differentiate between reality and dreams. That's terrifying. Oh, poor gosh. The rush, Mia. Think of your most pleasant dream. Multiply that feeling tenfold. All mainlining through your cortex in a few seconds. It's really quite something. So, I stealing dreams. So just constant consumption of dreams. Wow, this is different. The deeper the addiction, the more extreme the rift. Like uh, Jekyll and Hyde. So <laughs> this is the patient list that Dr. Nayak wrote out, and here is the death threat he received. The handwriting's sloped to by Look at the G's and the F's. Is it written by the same person? What? So the doctor is Jekyll and Hyde? Is that what they're implying? He's talking to himself. Another self. point does it does he uh, turn into the other version of himself I guess nighttime sundown kind of thing <laughs> that's why his lab assistant okay okay oh my gosh this is crazy that's his next victim Ooh, terrible circumstances for this. <laughs> well, that's very, very... It's clever. It's clever. I would have never, ever guessed that in a million years. Stealing dreams. You going to stop the plane? Yeah, yeah. 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 Crash into it? What is he doing? Peter, he's plugged in. I'm trying to shut down the program. Shut it down before impact. Shoot at it. <laughs> Get lucky. Oh. Oh, because they interrupted such a, I guess, 
extreme procedure, fried his brain. Checked out Nyack's control panel. All the dials were cranked up into the red. How do you think you decided to go down in one final blaze of glory? <laughs> you remember how horrified Nyack was when we told him that his patients were dying? I don't think that he was fully aware of what his darker side was up to until tonight. And so this was his way of trying to put a stop to things. I guess that's the irony. Hmm. His addiction to dreams became his nightmare. One that he couldn't wake up from. Maybe that was his only way of ending the nightmare. Wow. That is nuts. But very entertaining. Beloved husband. Maybe she can talk to the wife once in a while. Keep his memory alive. You're gonna be fine. good that's nicely done and I've never uh, I never expected something like that what's wrong 1984 <laughs> whoa whoa oh Peter oh no he's getting nightmares <laughs> What is it? You were talking in your sleep. I think I was having a bad dream. <laughs> I was a kid in my room. And the rest? You don't remember it? did something to him right this whole thing where he hasn't dreamt since he was eight or something yeah oh gosh <laughs> all right what time is it all right i got time i'm gonna go now rewind back at the scenes to see uh all those people she got the business cards from you know the red parks i only remember the cabbie wearing red i don't remember anybody else wearing red so i guess uh yeah that, that's a thing and I'll be right back with my thoughts about this episode. Yeah, this show is so much fun. <laughs> it really is. I always look forward to my moment where I can sit down and watch episodes from this series. It's really a lot of fun. Even though, you know, you, you have your episodes like this one where it's very much um, a filler, you know, filler kind of episode. Uh, all right, so the scene that I ended up picking I think lends to the bigger picture and it's not really related to the story directly anyway um is that scene where Peter is describing to Olivia about the process that he went through as a child with his nightmares and how he hadn't had any bad night terrors for a long period of his life like I think he said from eight years old to 19 was it or so the point is now, after seeing the end part there, where Peter's having a dream of him as a child, and then Walter seems concerned about that, I think something happened to Peter as a child that Walter somehow manipulated his brain in some way or shape or form that affects his memory about those nightmares or what they're of. Because ah, the point is, like, something happened with Peter and Walter during his childhood for Walter to be shown to be so concerned and for it to be such a blanket blank <laughs> for Peter during that specific period of time. And now knowing, of course, as a viewer, that that is alternate Peter, I'm sure there's a relationship to alternate Peter being brought over to this universe and maybe Walter had to do something for him not to remember his experience coming over. Uh, 
Okay. For those of you that are just like, you know, what are you thinking, Asha, when it comes to Peter, alternate Peter, being in this world? I've had a lot of different feedback here and there. Thankfully, most of it is vague, <laughs> rightly so. But the one thing that I'm, I'm still not sure about, and I don't want to, I don't want to go on a, a rant about it. Oh, not rant. Excuse me. A, a, a babble. A, a tangent. That's the word. A tangent. So I gotta see more. I gotta see more. But more or less, I thought that if he got Peter from the alternate universe in whatever way he, that happened. I guess Peter would remember it, and maybe that's something suppressed in Peter, and that's why he can't remember. But I thought, okay, I don't want to. I don't want to divulge too much ahead, especially if I'm completely wrong. I've gotten, you know, the feedback from some of you uh, who just are, are not enjoying when I'm on a when I go on a tangent in the wrong direction so I, I'm being being careful and just kind of waiting things out and when I feel confident that I have a theory based on more clues and I, if there are enough clues as it is I just haven't picked up on well then so be it so be it okay just be patient with me and I'll share I'll share what I can at the at the given point that I feel ready to do so but I think I'm right that there are clues for sure that shows that there is there is intervention on Walter's part with Peter. Otherwise, they wouldn't have bothered to show that clip at the end with him being so concerned with what Peter was dreaming about. Unless I'm, I'm unless that's going to lead to something else, which I have yet to see. So overall, aside from that, that's the scene that I've picked. Uh, now, the whole thing with this doctor being like a Jekyll and Hyde thing, oh my gosh, that was so clever and so different, and I, I really, it's a welcoming treat to see that, because, uh, you know, whenever it's original writing, I, well, for me anyway, at this point, I'm sure many of you have probably seen this kind of thing and other stuff, but I, I have it that I can recollect anyway, my terrible memory. Um, yeah, so it was cool, it was a nice, it was a nice mystery, and I liked that whole thing with Olivia and Charlie oh, and the anagram at the end ends up being related to how she met Charlie. I oh, I usually don't get too teary-eyed for stuff like that, but the way they executed it and how organic it was with Charlie dying and her trying to, uh, and her remembering her first time meeting him and that was really cool. That was really cool. And I did go back to look to see and all the people she did ask for the card had elements of red. <laughs> that's why it wasn't so obvious to me so I'm like who what uh the guy had a, tie, a red tie and I think the other person had um a little handkerchief that was red but okay yeah interesting that Sam knows how that works so I can't even imagine what other stuff she, he'll have her do to kind of um help build her character because that's how I'm seeing these things with Sam and Nina, uh, Nina. Sam and um Olivia it's it's character building for Olivia as well, and also to give us as viewers more insight into her emotional state and her uh, thinking process and just her experience as a character, which is cool. I really enjoy that. So Ash emoji wise, uh, I'm going to give this a four. This is a great episode. Rewatchable at least one more time. At least one more time. Um, yeah. Four. Yeah. Four. I'm confident with four. <laughs> So there you have it. That's my reaction to episode five from the second season of Fringe. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. I look forward to reading your comments about it. And if you want access to my full reaction to this episode, uncut, unfiltered, details about joining my club is in the description box below for you. So until my reaction to episode six, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos.